Hi, I'm Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes! There is ice in those veins! He's a special player. He's a real red. This guy will decorate the Premier League. It is uh, Bruno Fernandes. Download the Flow Sports app to watch the Premier League on Rutch. On the Flow Sports app, you choose what you watch. Download now. the grandstand area as they get ready to meet the officials who are just making their way out of the tunnel area Stephen Miller from flow a sponsorship manager is a part of the meeting and a greeting team and uh, the referees are also in position Darren Davey is gonna be in charge of this opening game in the flow Super Cup 2017 Shavara Dennis and of course Yvette Stevenson and the fourth official is Kenneth Breezer so welcome to you wherever you are watching the coverage here courtesy of a flow we're getting ready color bar you're looking at color bar there sporting green shorts and black top and they have been met by the officials the referees party led of course by the man who will be in the middle darren davy just meeting stephen miller and the rest of the meeting party there's also andre roper from one of the associate sponsors kfc right there as well because they're trying to as best as possible try to make out the people down in the meeting party so in a short time we'll be looking at the starting 11 for both teams what we can tell you though is that the two players who receive the yellow cards and eventually red two yellows in one case in the form of their captain ricardo mcintosh is back and of course there's another player who is back as well we'll give you that officially as we take a look at a wide expanse of the Catherine Hall Sports Complex here in Montego Bay. Coming up a little later on, maybe in a matter of two hours or so, St. Elizabeth Technical against St. Andrew Technical, and that will bring the curtain down on day one of the 2017 Flow Super Cup here in Montego Bay. So the formalities soon to be out of the way with the Calabar team going across to beat Clarendon College. And even though it's a neutral ground, it's Clarendon College's home ground when you see the team going over to meet. That is Lenny Teacher Hyde, the technical director at Clarendon College. And of course, they've been all the rage here in schoolboy football over the last couple of weeks, if you like. They've been playing some sumptuous football, and then many people up and down the country have fallen in love with them. So the spinning of the toss taking place right now. And the Clarendon College goalkeeper just going to do the honors for his team, Benjamin Williams. And of course, he's a co-captain. He shares captain's duty. And you're looking there at Lidshuju Sims. The man who is in charge of conditioning this Calabar team standing in the Calabar dugout. So the team is just meeting for the one last time as a team together in the middle of the park to say a final word of encouragement to each other. Clarendon College away in their blue to the left of the screen. And you're looking at the starting lineup. And as I mentioned, Ricardo McIntosh is back and also back for Clarendon College, um, who did not play. It's uh, Kevin Ankle. So Kevin Ankle. 
So now it's actually Sanjay Williams who is back. And uh, Sanjay Williams and Ricardo McIntosh. McIntosh is a co-captain wearing the number 10. And uh, that's the Clarendon College team, of course. You're looking there at the substitutes who will be rustled onto the field. Five of them if they are needed. And uh, it's a really messy situation both on the field and here in our commentary position. We have to be taking cover as we look at the boys from 61 Red Hills Road, Calabar High School. And of course, there's a player who is coming back as well. He received the red card in their last game, Rashane Williams against Jamaica College. And those are the players on the bench who they'll be looking to just in case the 11 who are summoned to start do not do the business. The lights are on, as you can understand. And it's really, really, really hard rain. But the surface is a brilliant one. And uh, it holds up very, very well. So goalkeeper Benjamin Williams just trying to make last-minute adjustments to his playing gear, his footwear, that is. And it's very important that the teams do this because they're going to be needed. So he's removing the red boot made famous here in Jamaica by Walter Boyd. You're looking there at the referee, Darren Davey. He'll be the man in charge. And you would have thought that he would have run over a 10,000 meter already or a marathon. No, it's rain because he's started to run as yet. And again, we welcome you to the opening day of the Flow Super Cup right here via Flow. And wherever you are in the world watching, we're getting ready for a good game. And let's see if at all the rain spoils the quality of this game. But there are two outstanding teams, two teams who have done very well this season. Calabar, many people believe, have punched above their weight by making it all the way deep into the Manning Cup. So even though the rain is affecting the way the spectators spread across the stadium, the Vuvuzelas are going with Clarendon College getting us on the way. And immediately they're centering their attack over on the far side. Calabar. It's very important to get an early feel of the game. So Clarendon College, known for their passing game, giving the early run around. This is Lamar Walker. What an outstanding Penn Francis Cup final he had. Calabar showing the early initiative. And just coming across here for Clarendon College. A chance here for Calabar! And they're on the score sheet early! It's very, very early. It's in fact, less than half a minute. And Calabar High School have jumped into a very, very, very early lead a la Dintel Technical against Clarendon College on Wednesday up at St. Elizabeth Technical in the Ben Francis Final. Calabar High School, their very first raid on the Clarendon College goal. And this one here came in from the number 11, Colin Anderson. And he played it in and it fell into the path of Kafani Brown who ran from the midfield and slided past Benjamin Williams in goal for Clarendon College. And Calabar High School have taken a 1-0 lead here in Montego Bay. But guess what? Clarendon College, they've fallen behind in their last three games. And the way they reacted, you would have thought they were leading. Cool, calm, and collected. And expect to see them do same here this evening. It's very, very gray and almost dark, except for the lights that are on and shining brightly here in Montego Bay at the Catherine Hall Sports Complex as Clarendon College look to respond to that shock lead taken by Calabar High School. And many people are wondering about the fitness of Clarendon College, not generally fitness, but the fact that they played two extra time games back to back on the Wednesday and before that on the Saturday and traveled immediately from St. Elizabeth Technical on Wednesday night into Montego Bay. Calabar came down last night and they would have been well rested. Their 6-1 defeat to Jamaica College last week, Saturday at the stadium, would have been their last the last time they played. Their goalkeeper having to touch the ball for the first time, DeAndre McCoy. is coming across and doing the tidying up job. Wearing the number 40 there. Walker. Still Walker for Clarendon College. Good speed. Managing to get off a right-footed effort. And just aimlessly past the left upright of McCoy's goal. So pint size. Dynamo in midfield, Lamar Walker. One of the top players in rural area football this season. And Clarendon College fell behind early against St. Elizabeth Technical in the Ben Francis semi. Fell behind early to Dintel Technical in the Ben Francis final. Here's Calabar again looking very, very fresh. And looking to have adopted very, very quickly to this wet condition. 
And you've got to give credit to the number 11, Colin Anderson. He really did well going down that right channel. And his shot was feeble. Wasn't handled well or dealt with well by Clarendon College. And it fell into the pathway of the man wearing the number 8, Kafani Brown. And all he had to do was to slot it into the back of the net. And he did so with a, a plum. And that is why you're seeing on your screen Clarendon College 0, Calabar 1. Here they are, though, Clarendon College. This is Nick Quaid Daly, a national under-17 player, looking to restore parity for Clarendon College. And the number 14 for Calabar did very well to get the ball away, Demira Adams. And just now, you got a glimpse of what Clarendon College is capable of as we look at the move once again. This one was from the Calabar, the last Calabar move. We abort that because the corner will be taken. And I'm sure we'll get back to that at some point. Here's a corner. Four blue shirts waiting in the area. And the daily getting a header onto that one. The referee's decision is that it came off a Calabar player. So Clarendon College with their second corner in succession in less than a minute. They have one, two, three, four, five blue shirts in the area. And McIntosh lurking just on the edge of the area. All the Calabar players bar one are back in the area. Here's Clarendon College. Walker with a good wild old-fashioned swing off the ball and Calabar called upon to called upon to make haste to work in their six yard area but the ball is still in the Calabar area Clarendon caught it looking tantalizing as the ball just spread across the area McIntosh was right there looking for any loose ball didn't fall for him good interception here from Calabar here they come again. And it does seem as if they have noticed something over on that right channel. All of their attacks so far have come from that right channel. And they look really sprightly, Calabar. They look like a team well rested. And one of the good things maybe for Calabar tonight, if Clarendon College manages to get back on level terms. But here, Calabar once again. And another shot. The goalkeeper okay. untroubled. And who can blame him? Colin Anderson for having a go at that one. A long ball. Over on the far side. Nicely measured. Interception there. Calabar looking very, very, very efficient this early in the game. It's Kemar Huntington for Clarendon College. Looking for passing options. Nice sharing of the football in the Calabar half by Clarendon College. Demario Phillips got on the score sheet in the Ben Francis Cup final. Sure he would want to do that again tonight. Daly managing to get the ball across. And the goalkeeper beaten in flight because of the wet and slipper conditions. I'm sure on another day he would have held on to that one quite easily because it was that kind of ball that came across. Throw into Clarendon College. Huntington. Now Phillips. Walker. Return to Walker. And a very nice and easy for goalkeeper McCoy. He just falls over on the football. And smartly. Didn't want to stay on his feet and then slip. And then the ball rolls innocuously under him. So he fell down on it immediately. And that's how you've got to treat the ball in conditions like these. Boys from Chapleton, having won the Ben Francis Cup, haven't gone home just yet. They made their way straight here to Montego Bay Wednesday night. So a good chance they'll be heading back to the hills of Chapleton tonight. The question is, will they head back a happy bunch? Or will they be commiserating? The rain hasn't gone away since the start of this game. But this is Phillips. Clarendon College must enjoy a surface like this. It suits their football playing style. Across the goalkeeper. Again. A really easy ball that came across. But again, because it's so wet and slippery, he had to make sure that he had it under control. Just to remind you that it is a play to the finish. Minus extra time. Here's this Phillips pulling the strings in the middle of the park.
Ryan Simpson. Phillips going on a searching run. Looking to pick out his captain, McIntosh. But an interception there by his opposite number in the color bar colors, Tyreek Reed. Bicep to bicep. Assistant referee over on the far side, Yvette Stevenson. And nearest to our commentary point is Shavara Dennis and the referee, Darren Daly. Yes, you're correct. You may now be looking at that scoreline and say, really? Yes, and it happened less than a minute gone in the game. And the man who got on the score sheet was Kafa, Kafani Brown. The rain is dissipating slowly as the color bar number 10 is kicked over. Orain Ferguson, their leading goal scorer, with some 14 goals so far this season. So the referee and the fourth official, the fourth official, Mr. Carrington Breeza, is having a chat there with the man in the middle, Mr. Davey. As Calabar gets ready to effect this free kick, Tyreek Reed standing over it, has a number of bodies forward. A weak and feeble effort. No surprise, he was dealt with quite efficiently and quite easily by Ryan Simpson in the Clarendon College defense. And that's the result of that clearance, a throw to Calabar. Just about 10 minutes gone in this. The opening game of Flow Super Cup 2017. It's rural versus urban. And it's arguably the top rural school at the moment, Clarendon College. Against not necessarily, well, clearly not the top school from the urban area, which is Calabar. Uh, people like Kingston College and Jamaica College have a lot to say about it. That's Shamar Farmer. And uh, the rain has eased up considerably but the surface is still wet and very 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 slippery and the players have got to be very careful with even the basic of controlling a ball passed to them in short quarter here they come again Calabar this is Ferguson Lorraine another header from Clarendon College Phillips this is McIntosh Mr. Ben Francis final Phillips so Clarendon College, in their own inim inimitable style of not giving away the football unnecessarily, but passing it around. And they're going to live or die by their passing game, Clarendon College. And this man has seen a lot of the football since the start of this game. Phillips, possibly the player who has seen most of the action in terms of touches of the ball. The proper foot rear wear is going to be very, very important in situations like these. As you look at the color bar number 10, Lorraine Ferguson, it's kicked over. Look at it again. Two color bar players slipping there. <laughs> and the free kick for the second tackle. Phillips trying to get in Nikhu Daly, the national under 17 player. Walker. Taraj Brown. McIntosh. Daly was the target. Didn't quite get to him. The interception was made there by the Calabar man in number six, Tyreek Reed. Deep inside the Calabar half is this Clarendon College throw. Made a hash of it. Rain Ferguson got a piece of the ball. But illegally so says referee. Corner to Clarendon College. Their third corner. They got two in succession over on the other side. As referee McCoy. Standing in the rain and just surveying things around his most important of areas. That's the 18-yard area. As he looks at this Clarendon College corner coming from his left.
Calabar attempting to come away with that. And opens up an opportunity for Clarendon College. Still with open. Clarendon College. They restore parity. And it's Ricardo McIntosh, the returning captain. He missed the Ben Francis Cup final. But he appeared here in Montego Bay, fresher than the rest. And just now, restoring parity for Clarendon College. As we take a second look at it, the header there from Calabar didn't have a great deal of power. But guess what? Another defender on the edge of the 18 yard area had an opportunity to get the ball away, didn't do so. And Ricardo McIntosh profited from a wonderful ball played in his pathway, not that man. It was Ricardo McIntosh, the number 10, who got the goal for Clarendon College. But that man you're seeing on your screen, Lamar Walker, was a part of the build up as well. So, after 13, approaching 14 minutes, it's one to Calabar and one to Clarendon College. So quite a number of fans who traveled up from Clarendon. They're always represented wherever Clarendon College plays. Not seeing a great deal from Calabar. In fact, we just heard the stadium announcer before the start of the game asking where the Calabar fans were. But I suppose you have fans here from Calabar for sure. But here is Phillips. Let's see how Calabar will respond to Clarendon College pulling alongside them. Shande James in the number 11 for Clarendon College. He's a 400 meters, 800 meters runner at champs. Didn't quite get into the 400 meters final, but a versatile sportsman. Here's Clarendon College once more, Nico Daly. It was too direct and it was a shade too hard. McCoy was skipping around this area. That's the man who got the goal, Ricardo McIntosh. He shares captaincy duties with the goalkeeper, Benjamin Williams. So the Ben Francis Cup champions are back on level terms with their urban area counterparts. A little later on, St. Elizabeth Technical against St. Andrew Technical. It's the opening day of a Flow Super Cup 2017. Nick Hugh Daly operating over on the far side, but now he's in the middle. Sure, waiting on the delivery. Nice bit of trickery there from the Clarendon College. Player over on the far side. It's Shandy James. Good football. Lamar Walker. Nick Hugh Daly. DeAndre borrows from Calabar. Almost allowing that one to get away from him. So, even though the conditions are not favorable for football, both teams are putting on a decent showing here. Their passing is good, their controlling is good. And the general off the ball running, good as well. Evenly matched at the moment. Will one pull away from the other at some stage in the game? Only time will tell. We've only played 16 minutes. Just a quarter of an hour gone in this game. And we've seen two goals already. Ferguson for Calabar. Still Calabar. Here's the goal scorer. Now Ferguson. Will he get a shot off? And he slipped just at that pivotal moment when he was looking to get the shot off. And the Clarendon College will try to break quickly. They'll get a throw. Here's Phillips. Huntington. Calabar playing in their traditional black and green. And the Clarendon College in full blue and the yellow which is a part of the school color. They have gone for it in stockings. Nick Hugh Daly scored in Clarendon College's last two games, 17 goals so far this season. 17 goals to Lamar Walker as well. And Ricardo McIntosh now moving up to 11 goals, the captain. So he came into this game 
with actually he came into the game with 11 goals so he's now on 12 goals ricardo mcintosh and that's now showing clarendon college what they were missing in that ben francis cup final Sanjay Williams playing in the heart of the Clarendon College defense. He missed the Ben Francis Cup final as well. He was shown a red, a red card in the game against St. Elizabeth Technical High School. Here's Shamar Farmer. Huntington operating on the right. Nice shadowing of the football by Calabar, but they've given it away. Onside says the referee. Free kick to Clarendon College. So Shant Shande James was looking across to assistant referee Shavara Dennis. He thought he was in the offside position right there. Looked at, he looked across to his right shoulder. And by the time he looked back to continue his move, he was cleared up by Tariq Reed. Another Clarendon College free kick. Loads of blue shirts in the area, but again, all the Calabar players, bar one, are back in the 18-yard area. Trying to nullify this Clarendon College free kick. Referee Davey having a chat with the, Clar the Calabar wall. Not yet satisfied that he's ready for this free kick to be taken. Now he is. Second bite of the cherry here for the Clarendon College number eight. Calabar having problems dealing with this one. A charge down shot there from Nikhil Daly. Throw here to Clarendon College. Now they've stepped up their game. Giovanni Thomas there, the man in the number four for Calabar, was trying to arrange things at the back as Clarendon College evidently have stepped up the level of their play and moving with a lot more alacrity and speed into the Calabar area. Here they are, they were just playing the ball around. This is Shante James. Huntington in the number six. Clarendon College just surveying their options with the ultimate aim of prize opening this Clarendon, this Calabar team, who took a shock lead after just 34 seconds in the game. Shamar Farmer, very intelligently done. Instead of playing it to the goal, he played it away and asked the goalkeeper to meet it there. It's wet and slippery. And you've got to also use your head, not just brawn. And that's what the players on the field, both sets of players, mind you, are using their brain because it's call, it calls for that even more so now. It's Phillips turning back the ball to Farmer. Nice lush green playing surface. And it's a double, double. So two games tonight, two tomorrow on back-to-back -back nights. This is Calabar. Kefani Brown, the one man who got the goal for them. Another Clarendon College move here. Calabar getting it away. Working overtime is DeAndre Burrows for Calabar in the number 12. And he's got to be careful because that man in the number 16 is arguably the most lethal in rural area schoolboy football this season, Nick Q. Daly. We're approaching the midway point in the first half. Clarendon College restoring parity on minute 14 to their co-captain Ricardo McIntosh, returning from suspension. But Calabar took the lead after just 34 seconds from Kafani Brown. Throw taken. Nicely, nice turn there by Nicole Daly. Just coming back off the right upright. And goalkeeper McCoy <laughs> must have thought that had gone out. He was absolutely nonchalant. Look at this turn from Nicky Daly. And immediately, just putting a bit of curl on it. And the goalkeeper was watching it. He thought it went out. I thought it was on its way out. But alas, it came back off. His right upright. And just now, the post was the goalkeeper's best friend. Four, 
Free kick one here by Calabar. Even though it's Shande James who is down. As I told you, he's a 400, 800 meters runner. He ran a champs this year. Let's see what happened. So the Calabar goal scorer, Kafani Brown, just trying to give Shande James the run around. And Shande James was caught in the face by the trailing right arm of, Shan of the Calabar man, Kafani Brown. And uh, it was Calabar who came away with it. Here they are again, down that favorite right channel of theirs. There's where the goal came from. There's where most of their attacking plays so far in this game for Calabar have come from. Giovanni Thomas there wearing the number four. It's a rainy night in Mobe. Not enough though to stop this game because the surface and the underbelly of this surface holds up very, very well. And the goalkeeper McCoy is taking a risk there. You don't do that with this man, Nick Hugh Daly. He's very, very smart. So the Clarendon College, two of the members of the management team of Clarendon College just standing away to the right of the bench. Lenny Hyde, Richard Palmer, the manager is there. And uh, Mr. Samuels, the physical trainer, who is second from nearest to the screen. This is Orain. Demiro Adams. So Calabar having a period of dominance here. Free kick taken quickly by Brown. This is a Calabar free kick. Dealt with by Clarendon College. Adams, Ferguson, Calabar getting away in the area while well, the Clarendon College defense are alive. Yeah, they come again, Calabar. Phillips. The ball's cute to Nikki Daly. The goalkeeper advances. Daly gets past him, but he doesn't get past the defender. And a hurried clearance. And the Calabar player is down. As we look at members of the Calabar management team as well, let's have a look at what happened. The ball was played in by, by, by Phillips, and it's queued off a Calabar player who was trying to make the clearance. And Nicky Daly was let in. But good, nice alert work there from the Calabar defender. And uh, just looking at it, it's Tariq Reed who went down. But he's back up now. Limping gingerly. Here's Clarendon College. Huntington brought into the play. Walker. Nice give and go there with Shande James. Ball had gone across the line, says the assistant referee. Shavara Dennis. And the rain is getting a lot heavier now. And referee Darren Davey has been busy since the start of this game. It's really, really hasn't had any big decisions to make. But because of the slipper conditions, there are many calls that he has had to make because players sometimes unable to control their speed when they're coming in to make interceptions and tackles. Here is Phillips. Daly. Well, this is Walker. Nice turn. Back to Walker. In the middle of the park for Clarendon College. Calabar passing the ball around in their area and eventually it's into touch the target there was the man in number 10 Orain Ferguson Shande James 
This is the man who is coming back from the suspension, Shanjay Williams. Now it's back with James. Phillips goes forward. Phillips almost playing like the midfield general. But that title goes to Lamar Walker. But Phillips has been really, really influential this evening. Every single thing for Clarendon College has gone through Demario Phillips. Here's Calabar. And the ball runs into the far side. Clarendon College has to get it away because the last touch came off the Clarendon College player. And now Calabar is with the throw. Look at those players. They need a change of clothing now. Some warm water on their skin and a hug. It's really, really difficult out there. This Calabar throw. It looks like it's going to be a long one. No. <laughs> and that is what happens when you're playing in treacherous conditions like these. <laughs> Let's have a look at this again. There you go. It's a wet football. Don't blame him. Milli Vanilli. Blame it on the rain. <laughs> so the stoppage in play here. Just like to tell you, you're not seeing them in your vision at the moment. But the entire Calabar bench is up. Trying to keep warm as opposed to just sitting down on the bench and let the water beat all over their bodies. We have got a restart to the game over on the far side and another Calabar throw. There you have it, the Calabar bench all up. They're standing behind the bench instead of sitting down because they don't want to be there and cold. It's not a good thing. They still have a small match of a football match to participate in. So they want to keep as warm as possible. And I'm sure if they were playing for people like Manchester United and Manchester City and Arsenal and Liverpool, when they go into the dressing room, they'll have a heater in there to keep them warm. We don't reach that level as yet. It's a long-range effort there from Ferguson. Charged down by Farmer. Still Calabar. Nice move here from Calabar. And just now, Brendan Freckleton losing possession. And Clarendon College looking to capitalize. Here's Shante James. Still James looking for a long range shot. Set up to do one. And decided against it at last minute. Demario Phillips. The ball is almost always going to get to him at some point. Just past the half hour mark in this game. Clarendon College just shading the possession. If you're just joining us, the Clarendon College team, they're operating, there they are. That's the color they're wearing today. And the color bar clearly in the black and green. Nice quick feet there from, by Huntington, preventing the ball going out. That's a goal scorer for Clarendon College. And he got that goal almost 20 minutes ago. Ferguson has been working really, really hard for Calabar down this left channel. One moment you see him in the mid middle of the park, the next he's over on the wide left hand side of the field. Really, really worked very, very hard in the 30 minutes that this game has been played so far for. Here's Clarendon College getting away in the area. McCoy advancing. And it does seem as if the last touch came off McCoy. And Clarendon College will get a corner. But they'll have to sort out the situation here with McCoy. Because it seems as if he took a knock on the knee when he went there to meet the Clarendon College player. Let's have a look at it again. Was it Nikwe Daly? No, it was Lamar Walker, it seems as if, who was getting in there. And he connected with the knee of goalkeeper McCoy. Ah, that hurts. And that is why McCoy is down that long. Worse, it's raining. If he was warm, maybe. But it must be cold, even though he's involved in a game. And that is why it's doubly hurtful and this gives the players a chance to have a chat about what they've seen so far in the 33 approaching 34 minutes of this game okay. 
Lenny Hyde looking pensive. Right behind Lenny Hyde in the gold shirt, Richard Palmer, the manager of the team. And one of the things about this Clarendon College unit is that all, most if not all, the members of their management team are old boys. So, I keep it in the family. But we're going to have a look at the opening goal. Here it is. Calabar, their very, very first raid on the Clarendon College goal. And a miscued shot there fell into the path of the man, Kefani Brown. And he just kicked it to the left of goalkeeper, Benjamin Williams. And the black and green from 61 Red Hills Road were celebrating then. So McCoy being attended to here by members of the medical team. Corner by Clarendon College. Didn't, wasn't dealt with very well. Walker turned, actually it was Shande James and McIntosh was standing just almost beside the penalty spot and he buried it. Missed the last game, but he's back and back with a bang. Putting Clarendon College on level terms with Calabar High School. And uh, Coach Lidzjushu Sims has uh, called over one of his members to have a chat with him about it. As we look at McCoy, it was really a hard knock. And uh, Tariq Reed, the man carrying the coach's instruction across. So McCoy is up. Now Clarendon College will be able to get the corner. A looping ball just out the frame of the goal. Calabar living dangerously. Clarendon College hitting against the frame of the goal. And Calabar coming under tremendous pressure. Now they are counter-attacking. And a cut out there by Farmer. Douglas just stepping in and picking the pocket of the Clarendon College right full back. Disappointing end to what looked like a promising move there from Calabar. And the man there, DeAndre Boros. But here is the effort from, effort from Clarendon College. Ah, right off the crossbar. And it did seem as if McIntosh got the last touch on that one and immediately Calabar counter-attacked. So just about nine or so minutes left in this first half. It has flown by so quickly. And the teams are inseparable in terms of the scoreline at the moment. But Clarendon caught it slightly with the ascendancy as far as the ball possession and chances created are concerned. But Calabar doing very, 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 very well. Here's Adams. Giovanni Thomas from Calabar down, injured. Let's see what happened. Oh, he turned. And didn't know that the Clarendon College player was so close to him. And uh, Demiria Adams is a player who is down, injured. His touch, when he turned, was just a bit too heavy. And it gave... The Clarendon College right fullback, Huntington, an opportunity. So the good old magic spray been applied there to Demirio Adams. Does seem as if he's going to be okay? So referee Davy is having a chat there. Uh, the Clarendon College player Tajay Brown. And it was Brown who came charging in and stuck his right boot into the midsection of Adams. So Adams is back up and uh, will retake his place on the field 
in short staff. Ferguson, nice control under the circumstances. Bit of improvisation there from Calabar, and they've got to get the ball away, Clarendon College, which they managed to do. Because lurking there was the Calabar number 11, who has been working very, very hard, Colin Anderson. It's a really messy situation out there, and the players, I'm sure, can't wait until the halftime break. They've got just about seven or eight minutes before that time. In the meantime, Clarendon College going forward, but again, another interception in the middle of the park there by Calabar. That time from Kevin Reed. Ferguson. Adams. It's a color bar throw. The Clarendon College players are not happy. I thought referee Davy got that one wrong. Here's Phillips with the ball for Clarendon College. Now they have an opportunity to attack. Shande James just streaking across the park. Almost taking the ball right to his teammate instead of passing it because he wasn't too far away from him and uh, Clarendon College called up on again to do more tidying up in their defensive area uh, this Calabar team equip equipping themselves very very nicely and uh, Phillips looking like the Liverpool midfield maestro Philip Coutinho everything that Clarendon College has done so far this afternoon has something to do with a pint size number seven who is standing in the middle of the park like an absolute general. It's Benjamin Williams, a goalkeeper, not a great deal to do. Here's Phillips again. There's a color bar number nine just sliding in as Brendan Freckleton. So the intensity of the game has died down a bit. We'll remind you that it's 90 minutes. And if at the end of 90 minutes, the teams are deadlocked, then it will be the taking of penalties. No extra time. This is Shande James. Here's Clarendon College coming forward once more. This is Walker. Still Walker. Will he get the cross? Will he get the shot? He gets the cross. And a chance here for Clarendon College. Still in the area for Calabar. Now they get it away. And Ferguson has a chance to counter. But guess what? Walker has found himself back in front of Ferguson. James. And the Calabar team just playing around in that area. These Clarendon College live wires are not people you take chances against. And we're approaching that time of the game when we look to the assist the fourth official to see how many minutes will be added. Can't see more than two, at best three. Corner again to Clarendon College, late in this first half, to be struck from the far side like they have been all game long. Nick U. Daly continuing to be a thorn in the flesh of defenders up and down the country at this level. Corner taken short. Clarendon College in the area once more. The ball is at the feet of Farmer who has left his defensive area and has found himself in the 18-yard area. Under three minutes to go before the end of the half and the long-range effort just skimming wide and uh, that effort there coming in from Fagan actually Kimar Huntington was a player who left his right fullback position to effect that long range effort 
So let us do Sims, the coach of Calabar, just below her commentary point, telling the players that they only have two minutes to go in this, the first 45 minutes. Clarendon College once again, having to defend against Calabar. Throw into Clarendon College. So you get the impression the teams are just playing out the remaining minutes in this, the first 45 minutes. They'll go to their respective dressing rooms to have a chat about it. And they will not get to those dressing rooms quickly enough, I can tell you. But I'm sure they've played in conditions like these, all of these players, on several occasions before. If you're a football player, at some point you're going to have to deal with conditions like these. Here's Ferguson for Calabar, just riding the challenge here. From the Clarendon College, number 15, Tajay Brown. That's the last few seconds of the 45. Not yet seen. The fourth official, Carrington Breezer, putting up his number board to indicate how many minutes will be added and I think he'll go, he's going to be doing it any moment now because he took a look at his watch in the meantime Calabar in the Clarendon College area that was Freckleton the ball falling neatly and the goalkeeper Williams coming still hasn't got it under control Calabar not taking advantage of that slip by the goalkeeper and Colin Anderson just looking as if he was saying to himself goodness if I just could get that back so there you have it. Three minutes of added time. So we're about midway. Added time in the first half. Here's Clarendon College. Perhaps the last real attack of the game. Oh, we'll have to half. And uh, they're still in and around the Calabar area. This is Adams having problems getting the ball away. Clarendon College settling for a throw. Which is taken quickly by Walker. Now he gets the return pass. This is Farmer. Sanjay Williams. Still Farmer. Just about a minute or so to go in this the first half. The rain is still with us, but not as heavy as it was when we started or even 10 or so minutes ago here's walker trying to link up there with phillips it didn't come off ferguson tries to get a color bar counter-attacking movement in motion it didn't happen so color bar throw over on the far side Just seconds remaining in this, the first half. It's the opening day of Flow Super Cup 2017. And the score you're seeing, well, it's 1 1 at the moment. And we're anticipating the halftime whistle any moment now. In the meantime, Calabar still stroking the ball around. Adams. Daly from Clarendon College hustling and winning possession. They get a throw. And you just get the impression that the whistle will go. I've been saying this for a little while now. But apparently the referee started counting when the number went up. We thought 45 minutes had gone a long time before the three minutes went up. But apparently the referee counting from the board was hoisted by his fourth official, Mr. Beza. And here's Clarendon College motoring forward. Free kick one here. Shande James. Will he get a chance to shoot? Yes, he does. And it rolls right into the palms of goalkeeper McCoy for Clarendon for Calabar. And the referee runs away. And almost beckoning McCoy to kick the ball upfield. And when he does so,
Ferguson out left for Calabar. Heavily policed here by three Clarendon College players. Does well to get away from them. Now deserve a good cross. And it wasn't. And the referee, Davis, says he's seen enough of the first 45 minutes of this gripping opening game of Flow Super Cup 2017. We're coming to you live from Catherine Hall Sports Complex here in Montego Bay. And in short order, we'll be giving you a look back at those two goals. The first one came in the first minute of the game, 34 seconds to be exact. And the teams are heading back to their respective dressing rooms. And in addition to the team talk, I'm sure the towels will be flying all over the dressing room. Players trying to get themselves dry. And hopefully they have a second suit like this one to have a change of clothing before they retake the field. But then again, they are footballers, so they might just come back in those. Who knows? But we're at the break, and it's 1-1 between Clarendon College and Calabar in the opening game of Flow Super Cup 2017 at Catherine Hall in Montego Bay. Just to remind you that come a little later on, this, the second game of the double header will feature a St. Andrew Technical against St. Elizabeth Technical. So the clash of the technical teams. And we now look at the highlights of the first 45 minutes. This is the first attack from Calabar. This is Colin Anderson. Ball falling there in the path of the man who eventually get the shot on, Kafani Brown. And that was after 34 seconds. And the Calabar team was cock a hoop, just wheeling away to celebrate. Just looking at another opportunity here for Calabar. And the goalkeeper, Williams, was right in the right position. Right place at the right time. This is a Clarendon College move. And the Walker shot, charged down, didn't have the kind of power. And this was where the goal came from. Calabar unable to clear their lines. Unable to get the ball away from the danger area. And it fell here for the captain, Ricardo McIntosh. Let's have a look at it again. Shande James was the one who got the shot on. The goalkeeper kicked it away but only in the pathway of this man wearing the number 10, the man who missed the Ben Francis Cup final, and the man who shares captaincy duties with Benjamin Williams in the Clarendon College goal. And here's another opportunity, just coming back off the right upright, the goalkeeper went McCoy, really, really thought this was going away, but a very skillful move there from Nikkei Daly. And in one turn almost, in one motion, turn and kick, and the ball came off. Here's another opportunity for Clarendon College, but it was thwarted by the outstanding Adams, who fell down injured right after effecting that blockage. And uh, Clarendon College having the ball coming off the frame of the goal from a neat header. And the goalkeeper, McCoy, realizing that his 18-yard area is a very, very busy place. Calabar late in the first half, but have gotten an opportunity with the goalkeeper failing to hold on and Calabar failing to capitalize. And referee Davey eventually says, you know what? Head back to your dressing rooms as the fans over on the far side in the grandstand, if you like, trying to get as good a seat as possible. And as good a seat as possible in these circumstances mean where the shelter is. As we look at these statistics, you look at the statistics, that's the most important right at the top there. 1-1, one, one, no separation. But in terms of possession, Clarendon College is edging, well, not edging this one, is having a lion's share of the possession and the shots on target, they're dominating that area as well. Shots on target, they dominate there as well. In fact, Clarendon College dominates every single area except for the top one where they're equal with Calabar in terms of goals. And the referee yet to go to his pocket. Five fouls apiece and five corners to come camp to Clarendon College, none to Calabar at the moment. So we're at the break. The entertainment is being revved up and we're going to go for a break. When next you hear from us, it will be for the start of the second half. And Gabriel Jesus pounces to give City the lead. Beautiful, broad, blue Brazilian smile. Gabriel Jesus wins it with the last kick of the season. And Gabriel Jesus has his goal. Down low, the flow sports app to watch the Premier League on Rush. On the Flow Sports app, you choose what you watch. Download now. All right, so welcome back to Catherine Hall here in Montego Bay. And you will join us just in time to see the officials just converging in the middle of the park and just having a chat, I suppose, slightly about what took place in the first half. They would have done so at the break, but to wishing each other luck as they get ready for the start of this. As we look at the goals here, first from Calabar in minute number one, 
And the ball charged on the right, fell into the part of Kafani Brown, and he just slipped it to the left of goalkeeper Williams in goal for Clarendon College. And Calabar were up and running, taking the lead in the first minute. But Clarendon College, they restored parity. This headed ball away from the area, failed to get it cleared away. There was Ferguson, and the goalkeeper, in trying to save the goal, Picked it into the path of goal, the captain of Clarendon College. Um, that's Ricardo McIntosh. And then what did you know? It was called Clarendon College back on the score sheet. And it has been this way since minute number 14. And the teams are now back onto the field. The rain has left us. And we're left with a slipper field. But a very, very nice, plush field. As Calabar will get us on the way. Colin Anderson standing in the middle of the park. And uh, he will get this one on the way for Calabar. Referee Davy standing just on the line. We're on the way for the second half here in this the Flow Super Cup opener for 2017 between Clarendon College and Calabar High School and immediately a throw into the Clarendon College team. Again, to remind you that it's a play to the finish, but it will not have extra time. It will go straight to penalties if the scores remain the same at the end of the 90 minutes. So the Ben Francis Cup champions in possession. This is Phillips. Really, really put on a good show for Clarendon College in the first half of the game. And this man just came back into the team. Sanjay Williams, we're in the number 12. Clarendon College almost going route one. And a good shadowing of the football here by the Calabar right fullback. She's the number 12. Andre Burrows. Quite start to the second half. And it finds Calabar defending. Burrows. Managing to keep that one in. Fights kill for the there. Was Roshane Williams. Calabar. A free kick one here by Lich Sims' team. After Kafani Brown, the goal scorer, was kicked to the turf. Just a sprinkling, just slight drizzle, nothing to be worried about at the moment in terms of the rain. And the field has held up very, very well. Shande Brown to James, playing it into the queue. Daly, Daly's in on goal for Clarendon College. He shoots. Clear opportunity there for the national under 17 player. And that was, that must, must go down as a full chance for Clarendon College. Look at it. He was letting because, again, just profiting in, profit, profiting from the slipper condition was Nick U. Daly there. But just didn't make Calabar pay the price. Early let off in the second half for Calabar. Another free kick one here by Calabar. Phillips, the offender. The Mario Phillips. Unhappy with the call. He thought he did nothing wrong. Let's have a look. Judge for yourself. Not that play. This is the play. Oh. Nonetheless, it's a free kick to Calabar. To be struck midway. The Clarendon College half. And the man with a leg up on this one is Roshane Williams standing behind the ball. No, he's left it to Hakeem McCoy. Just seems as if he wants to go direct. And it does seem as if he wants to strike it left-footed, which he did. But aimlessly past the left upright of goalkeeper Williams' goal. So, a captain pull rank. It's Hakeem McCoy. So, no grounder skimming off this wet surface. But goalkeeper Williams stood untroubled in his goal. Coming up at 7 o'clock. Stets against stats. Here's Nick Uday trying to use his speed to good effect. And the Calabar High School, known for speed and athletics, will have none of it. And pending over on the far side there is Tariq Reed. Did well to get out of that tight situation and more importantly to keep possession. But Clarendon College gets it back. Little Lamar Walker was roughed up there. 
near the Colabar 18 yard area. And a free kick to Clarendon College taken quickly. Corner. Just four minutes approaching five. Gone in the second half. And it's Colabar conceding an early corner. And uh, Colin Anderson was the player who couldn't get the ball away for, Clar for Colabar upfield. And the resulting corner for Clarendon College coming across. A chance here for Clarendon College. And the ball is in the back of the net. And guess who? It's Niku Daly. On 17 previous occasions, goalkeepers up and down the rural area have been asked to take the ball out of the back of their net, kicked or headed by Niku Daly. And on the 18th occasion, it was the turn of McCoy, DeAndre McCoy from Calabar High School, who was taking the ball out of the back of his net. And the goal came on minute number 50, merely five minutes in the second half. And it came from this corner. Calabar not dealing with it well. And if it's one player from this Glandon College team, you would not want to have an opportunity in that danger area. It was the only man that it felt on that occasion. And he wears number 16. He has 18 goals so far this season. Nikhil Daly, three straight games he has scored for Clarendon College. And they now lead this contest by two goals to one here at Catherine Hall in Montego Bay. Here they come again. Calabar has got to be very careful because this Clarendon College, they score in bunches, they score one, and then suddenly they're up two and three. And they've won their games by big margins, by and large in the competitions they've played in so far this season. And now they're leading this one by two goals to nil with still 40 minutes of football to be played. And Calabar, having done so well in the first half, just need to keep their shape and keep what they had going for them in the first half going here in the second this Clarendon College team has the ability to wear people down and it does seem as if they get stronger the longer that the game goes on and they have displayed extreme level of fitness in the games that we've seen them in the televised game that the country has had an opportunity to see them and falling in love with their style of play but also their level of fitness. So we're into Calabar on the near side, close to our coming to point, taken there by DeAndre Burrows. Burrows with the throw. Free kick one by here, by the Calabar team. The fans for Clarendon College. Not sure that the referee made the right call. But Brendan Freckleton was down for the count. And now the free kick to be struck once again by their captain. Hakeem McCoy. He got one maybe two or three minutes ago from this almost the same spot. Maybe a few yards forward. And it was struck hard. That one was as well. But Williams in the goal for Clarendon College, proving more than equal to the task. Long kick downfield by Clarendon College, by Calabar. And the ball almost from one goalkeeper to the next, except for that inter reception there or intervention there from the Calabar striker Colin Anderson here's Clarendon College charging down the right Calabar going forward approaching the Clarendon College D Ball taken away. Free kick one here again by Calabar. So they're winning free kicks. And the latest is won by their goal scorer, Kafani Brown, who gave them the lead. Here he's stretching. And he's in a tussle there with Shandé Brown, who pulled him back. So he was called for pulling the shorts of Kafani Brown. 
the captain with another of his long-range bombs. This time is more directly in front of goal, right down the middle, if you like. And if he gets this on target, it's going to give the goalkeeper problems. Once it's on target, it's going to give the goalkeeper problems. And the goalkeeper having to die. Full stretch, still a chance for Kalaklabar. And the striker just leaning back. That was Colin Anderson. And that is why the ball was key, because he leant back. All he had to do was to lean forward, put his head over that ball. But he was in a rush to get it away. So there the goalkeeper just pegging it back. So his head wasn't over the ball, it was all over the place. And he wasn't in control of his body weight when he was trying to strike that one. And the resulting, the result from that particular effort was quite predictable. Here is Shandy Brown, on the outside of his left foot, playing it into the little star man, Lamar Walker. Not having the greatest of games this afternoon, Lamar Walker. But because he sets such high standards, anything below what we're used to seeing him with will be criticized, I'm sure. But still a key and pivotal member of this Clarendon College team, like is this man on the ball, Shandy Bra James. McIntosh, the man who got them back on level terms. Here's Nick Hugh Daly, who gave them the lead. Still Daly, still Nick Hugh Daly. Uh, a little bit of selfishness because right on top of the area was Ricardo McIntosh. McIntosh was screaming, but DQ Daly immediately turned and apologized to McIntosh. He really should have played it on to McIntosh, and he's still apologizing to his captain. Yeah, he said sorry. If you read his, his lips there, he said sorry. Really should have played it onto the ed edge of the area to McIntosh. But what's gone is gone. We're having... Decent football game here with Clarendon College coming from behind to take the lead. So the fans continue to pile in. There's a Calabar number 15 just getting ready. Javante Hockey getting ready for action. In the meantime, it's Clarendon College with possession. Just sharing the football around. This is Sanjay Williams. Back to Williams. He was one of those who missed the Ben Francis Cup. He got a red card in the Ben Francis semi against Tets. And he's back. And he's taking his place in the starting lineup. Walker. Nice turn. Daly. Calabar breaking up Clarendon College's latest foray into their 18-yard area. A long ball played by Ferguson. Ball played across, a chance for Calabar! And the Clarendon College defense went to sleep at Calabar. Finally, the number 11 has been knocking on the door all evening after long. And he scored his 15th goal of the season, Colin Anderson. And it's 2-2. The Clarendon College defense went totally to sleep. Look at this. It was a peach of a pass from Ferguson. Williams picked out Anderson. And the rest is history. Low grounder by Williams. And it was a deliberate ball across because he spotted his striker. And Colin Anderson kicked it into the back of the net for Calabar to restore parity. So we've got four goals so far, and it's not even an hour yet in this game. Here's Phillips. James, long searching ball. And cut out there by Demari Adams. But what a deliver there from Ferguson, or Rain Ferguson produced the pass of the game so far and did well to pick out Roshane Williams and in one motion almost kicked it into the area where Colin Anderson was waiting and he brought Calabar back 
right into this game with the equalizer. So, to all at the minute, it's now exactly on the hour mark. And it's captain of Calabar High School, McCoy, Hakeem McCoy. This is the goal squad, well, the man who gave them the lead, Kafani Brown. Ball taken away there by Shante Brown. Phillips. Long searching ball looking there for Nikki Daly. Skillfully done there by Phillips. And picked out Kevin Ankle. Ankle gave the ball away. Now Colabar gets an opportunity to attack. This is Roshane Williams. The man who served it up for Addison and he's looking to do something similar. Managing to drag the goalkeeper away from his cage. So, handle ball there. Clarendon College is number 15, Tajay Brown. Free kick one by Calabar over on the far side. Clarendon has already constructed a two-man wall. And you wonder if they're going to have someone else join the party. You know, it seems as if they're going to stay with the first yellow card of the game. To Tajay Brown. From Clarendon College. Waiting on the delivery. Four Calabar shirts in the area. Waiting on this del delivery. Let's see what the free kick will be like. It's a grounder. Coming back off the bar. Well, the right upright, actually. And the very same offense that Tajay Brown was cautioned for. <laughs> the Calabar player committed the same offense, but it's clear that it wasn't deliberate, and that is why he wasn't carded. And that is why Tajay Brown was carded, because it was a deliberate handball. Shande Brown, now Phillips, looking for a long-range effort! That fell out of the goalkeeper's grasp! What a lucky goalkeeper! Corner taken quickly. Here's the man, Phillips, who just shot that one. Huntington. They shot charge down and pace taken off it. Here's Calabar. It's two against two. They're getting away in a counter-attacking move. Very good interception there. In fact, an extremely good interception there. That one would have been played into Williams. And it could have been very, very interesting for Clarendon College. Let's look at the shot here from Phillips. The goalkeeper went for it. Didn't get to it. it. Actually got a touch on it to it. And it skimmed away behind. And the color bar broke away. Just, just couldn't take advantage of it. Here they are though. A chance to go 3-2 up. And they have. Ferguson. Who's been having a fabulous game. For color bar so far this afternoon. Has given color bar. A three goal to two lead. So two goals for color bar in the space. Of five minutes. Here's, oh, here's it again. Again, the Clarendon College defense went to sleep because Ferguson came from behind. In fact, Huntington was the culprit there. And you've got to credit Ferguson for his awareness and alertness. Because he came from behind the, Cal the Clarendon College defense to push Calabar back into the lead. Clarendon College. We've seen them come back 
in big games. Can they do it again? This Calabar team very organized. And they've done one thing. They've taken the Clarendon College crowd out of the game. There's a long searching ball that should go away because the surface is wet. On a normal day, maybe, just maybe, he would have gotten to that one, Kevin Ankle. But not today when the surface is so slippery and the pace that the pass came with didn't give him an opportunity to get that one. But is an upset on the cards. 25 minutes away, Calabar from a place in the semi-finals of the Flow Super Cup. But then, there's a lot of football left to be played. But they're taking advantage of the wide open spaces that Clarendon College leaves whenever they go forward. And that could very well be the problem that Clarendon College have to grapple with now. And the Clarendon College players cursing amongst themselves at Sanjay Williams. And that, that's not a good sign in football. You don't want that. And it's uncharacteristic of Clarendon College because they're, they're a team that personifies a focus and a calm. And they're known for that as much as they're known for their nice free-flowing football. Now they have to make that count because they're trailing in this game for a second time. Quickly taken through by DeAndre Boros from Calabar. As Calabar is a lot quicker to the football than Clarendon College. Ferguson. So Calabar, having given Clarendon College the run around here this afternoon. Ferguson, this is the man who gave Calabar the lead for the second time. Calabar looking very sprightly. This is Williams. Nice sharing, the confidence you can see now. Just coming through the pores of the Calabar players and Clarendon College. Now having to get the balls hastily away from their 18-yard area. This is Walker Lamar, the little midfield star. He's not really getting his boot, is not getting his bearings on today. Complete opposite of the player that we saw on Wednesday in St. Elizabeth. And for once, the Clarendon College players looking a bit tired. So it's 3-2 in favor of Calabar. Still some way to go. Here is Sanjay Williams. Still playing the Clarendon College football. The players in blue. Not kicking the ball away, not panicking. But certainly trailing. Farmer. Brown. Another interception here by the Calabar captain, Hakeem McCoy. Now Oreen Ferguson flicks the ball forward. Colin Anderson finding space in between the Clarendon College defense. Shande Brown playing it in the Q daily and offside. So the Q daily. Moved just a shade too quickly, says the assistant referee. Let's see on the replay what that will tell us. But Yvette Stevenson says, Nick Q. Daly was ahead of the Calabar defense when the ball was played. He's very quick, and the Calabar players, I'm sure, knew that coming in. Here again, a chance for Calabar, and it's now four. It's 4-2 four in favor of Calabar. Colin Anderson, what is happening here? The Clarendon College team is falling to pieces here in Mobay, and the boys from Red Hills Road are high-flying. 
Look at what it means to those on the bench. And this man has gotten a double. Their leading goal scorer this season came here with 13, 14 goals. And he's added two to his tally. And he's there away back for Clarendon College. It doesn't seem so at all. What is happening? The big favorites coming into this game. And now they're trailing by four goals to two with just about 20 minutes to go in the game. Look at this. The defense of Clarendon College has been shambolic in this game. Cursing amongst themselves while Colabar celebrating. And with each goal, you can see the Colabar confidence level just going through the roof. This is Shande Brown. Phillips. Ankle. Dealt with well there by Colabar. Managing to keep the ball in. This is Williams. Clarendon College playing with a bit more purpose and urgency. Colabar. He's trying to get the ball away. Was a captain Hakeem McCoy. Bailed out there by one of his teammates. And Clarendon College making a substitution. And we'll look. Dean Ewan is the man coming on. And Kevin Ankle, the man taking off. So Dean Ewan is on in the number 22. Phillips. Here's McIntosh, the captain. And the Clarendon College team looking as if they are lacking in ideas. Unable to penetrate this well-organized Calabar defense. Here they come again, Clarendon College. But Ferguson, even Ferguson, a midfielder is back helping out in defense. And Calabar is hell-bent on keeping things tight at the back. Kafani Brown plays it over on the far side. And already, Colin Anderson is on his way. He gets the ball. Still waiting for support. The Calabar players are not coming forward, even when they have possession. That could be a very dangerous tactic, because that could let in the Clarendon College players. Here's Niku Daly, getting in between two players. Still Daly with the ball. And trying to give the Calabar defense a run around. Kicked over in the area. The Calabar, the Clarendon College supporters are asking for a penalty. Referee Davis says no. But Clarendon College comes back. McIntosh. They understand Clarendon, the urgency of the situation. This is Walker. Free kick to Clarendon College. Calabar has got to be careful because they're, they're defending with uh, 17 minutes to go. But they're defending a two-goal lead. So I suppose they have something to work with. This is Williams. James. Phillips. Still Phillips. Calabar gets back possession. Slowing the pace of the game down. Using up the spaces. This is Rasheen Williams. I tell you, the Clarendon College team looking very, very, very tired. Another substitution by Clarendon College. They're ringing the changes. They have five of them. And this time they're bringing on Roderick Granville. And off comes Tajay Brown. Rashane Williams, nice give and go. And Calabar all over Clarendon College. In fact, they're asking all the questions. The boys from Red Hills Road, they've come to Montego Bay as the underdog. And at the moment, they're just 16 precious minutes away from booking a place in the semi-final of the Flow Super Cup in what would be a huge upset here in Mobe. Clarendon College has been the talk of the town for the last week and a half. 
In fact, many people were looking at them as possible Pro Super Cup winners. They may still go on to do so, but if they do so, they've got to, first of all, get over this massive hurdle in front of them. A two-goal advantage to Calabar. Let's see what they do with this latest foray. Into the Calabar air, the goalkeeper advancing. Doing very well to pluck that one out of the air. Goalkeeper McCoy, and he lays on it to buy a few seconds. In fact, he says he's injured. And look for the medics to go onto the field. Even if it's not warranted, but that's how it is in football. But Clarendon College, the players are shell-shocked. They're just staring at each other, looking for answers. And we look again. Goalkeeper just going up, falling over. And uh, they've called on the medical personnel. The goalkeeper is injured. We're getting a bit of stretching there from his captain Hakeem McCoy. So the two McCoys. This was what happened on that occasion. And the Vuvuzelas you're hearing coming through our sound effect microphone are those from the Clarendon College supporters. Their spirit has not yet Dampton. They still believe they have what it takes to come back. But the Calabar team has organized themselves very, very well. Clarendon College in the danger area for Calabar. Ferguson. Colin Anderson charging down again. Good speed. And goalkeeper Williams was well out of his goal and he got there just before Anderson. McIntosh getting on to the end of this one. Goalkeeper McCoy advances and a chance for Clarendon College. Kicked away just before it gets into the back of the net by Captain Hakeem McCoy. And that one had goal written all over it. And the big Calabar captain showing a sense of awareness. Very good take there from McIntosh. Goalkeeper McCoy getting the last touch on that one. Bailed out by his captain. That easily would have been 3-2. 4-2 actually. And it would have been 4-3. And it would have been game on. Thirteen precious minutes to go in this game. So just around seven o'clock we have the second game of the double header between St. Elizabeth Technical and St. Andrew Technical. But we have in front of us a potential upset. And it it's getting closer to reality the more the seconds tick away. Kifani Brown kicked over in front of referee Daly. No problems with that, says the referee. Here's Clarendon College streaming forward once more. Here's a man who came onto the field just a short time ago. Dane Ewan. It's a goal kick here to Calabar. 12 minutes and the countdown continues. 12 minutes away from easily what would be if it comes to pass the biggest upset in schoolboy football this season no one expected this score line and i'm sure if this score line was to be on the cards tonight at this stage of the game maybe 80 or 90 percent of football fans up and down the country would have bet on clarendon college having this score line instead of calabar but it is football and these things do happen Approaching 79 minutes, 11 minutes away, Calabar High School from 61 Red Hills Road. They've played a very, very intelligent game of football here today. Clarendon College still not yet out of it. They are capable of magical stuff. But they need to show it, not just being capable of it. This is Phillips. He's gone off the boil since the start of the second half. After really running the show in the first half, he was really the man pulling the strings in most of the Clarendon College moves. Here he is. Taking all the throws, Phillips. 
Things just not going the way of Clarendon College today. And it's a combination of superb Calabar team and some defensive frailties displayed by Clarendon College responsible for this scoreline. The goalkeeper coming to collect didn't do so cleanly. Still down. It's got to get up because the players have no obligation to stop the game if the referee doesn't. Now McCoy is back up on his feet. Ten minutes to go in the game. Calabar holding on to a 4-2 advantage. That's the man who scored the double. Colin Anderson. It should be a long journey back to Chapleton. And it will be a bittersweet couple of days on the road for CC. Because they went down to St. Elizabeth Technical on Wednesday and won the Ben Francis Cup. They didn't go back up to Chapleton. They came straight to Mobay. So when they go back to Chapleton, either tonight or tomorrow, it will be the first time they'll be back in about six days. And their road trip would have been a bit of a sweet one. So Colin Anderson, the leading scorer for Calabar, getting a double tonight. Long searching ball. They're looking for their saviour, Nikki, Nikki Daly. He has the ball. What will he do? Still Daly. <laughs> Throwing to Clarendon College. Bijan Thomas is off his bench because he's going to effect another substitution. In fact, it's going to be a double substitution. So the number 21 going in, Omar Reed. And McIntosh is off. So it's, uh, it's one substitution. So it's Ricardo McIntosh who has been taken off. And on in his place is Omar Reed. DeAndre Boros down injured. So Boris has been taken off the field, injured. Eight minutes to go. Under eight minutes to go for Calabar. The look on Lenny Hyde's face tells a story. He's contemplating another substitution. Look at that scoreline. Does it tell a story? Is it a shocking one for you? So Calabar are making a substitution. So they've taken out Boros and they've brought in Javante Pocu, who's been warming up for a little while. Finally gets a chance on the field. So here's Clarendon College. Walker. A long range effort there. A goalkeeper spill it again. But luckily for him, he didn't have the pace to take it behind for a corner. Under seven minutes plus stoppage time. And Calabar will be through to the semi-finals of the Flow Super Cup. They came here. No one gave them a chance, I'm sure, except themselves. But they'll be heading back to Kingston tonight if Clarendon College doesn't turn this around with a place in the semi-finals. Sanjay Williams. Farmer. Long ball played downfield by Clarendon College. Uncharacteristic of them. They're used to playing the ball around. Now they're going route one. Time woefully against them. Even if they get a goal now, it will still be a 
difficult task because they'll be tasked with getting another. So they need two goals in just about seven minutes. This is Phillips. Here's Calabar coming forward in the middle of the park. This is their goal scorer, Kafani Brown. Now this is Ferguson going forward for Calabar. He got the fourth goal and uh, robbed of the ball in the edge of the area for, for Clarendon College. Referee says nothing is wrong with that. Ball spread over on the far side. This is Colin Anderson who got a double for Calabar tonight. They're leading by four goals to two with just about seven minutes to go in the game. What a surprising result here in Montego Bay if they should hold. Here's Clarendon College coming forward though. They're over on the far side. Free kick to Clarendon College. Taken very, very quickly. Nikhil Daly. And the side netting. So the free kick has to be taken over. And uh, Clarendon College will look to make another of their substitution. Antonio Reed will be coming on. Sanjay Williams has been taken off. So Antonio Reed, the number 18, just running to take his spot. And the free kick to Calabar. There's Clarendon College. Under four minutes to go in this very, very surprising first game. What a start to the Flow Super Cup 2017. One of the favorites on their way out. Here's Walker. Shande James. Still James. Looking for Daly. Didn't get to him. Phillips. First touch, poor, and allowed the Calabar defender, in this case, Ferguson, a chance at the ball. Throw into Clarendon College. This is James, they call him Rima. He's a veteran of at least three or four Clarendon College teams. This is Phillips again. Ball played in to the man who just came onto the field. Clarendon College has pulled one back with just about four minutes to go. The man who just came onto the field, Antonio Reed, has thrown a lifeline to Clarendon College. Look at this. So Clarendon College, Antonio Reed, kicking the ball in the back of the net powerfully. And he has thrown Clarendon College a lifeline. Is it too late? So Clarendon College were on their way out and they may still very well be, but they just have a small, small lifeline. The door, the door left slightly ajar by that man, Antonio Reed. Barely a minute on the field. In fact, he came onto the field for that free kick. And Clarendon College, it's 4-3. A long range effort here from Captain McCoy. It's given up possession to Clarendon College. Route 1 football now for Clarendon College. Here they come again. Two footed tackle there from Calabar. No, Calabar will have to be more careful at the back. They were on Easy Street just a couple of minutes ago. And now Clarendon College sensing that they could very well get back into this game. 89 minutes gone. Mario Adams is down and he's back up, buying a few seconds. No, he was actually kicked. He was actually kicked. The referee, the assistant referee on the far, far side did not spot that one. 
Omar Reed actually kicked the player. And he kicked him off the ball. Here's another substitution for Kalabar. Tariq Reed is going to be taken off. Matthew Sterling will be going on. So, Alfani Brown is going to be off and on. As we look at this again, this is the incident. Look at this. R right here. Look at, ah, right there. That's a red card. That's a red card. He should have been sent off. He should have been sent off. And he was standing right in front of the assistant referee over on the far side. Yvette Stevenson. How did she miss that? That's a definite red card. Long kick up field. So, the fourth official will shortly be showing how many minutes are left in this game. Where Clarendon College are looking to come from behind from two goals down with minutes to go to keep alive their hopes in the Flow Super Cup. Here they come. Still playing the ball around. Still Clarendon College. Nice sharing of the football. This is what the country has fallen in love with, with Clarendon College. So four minutes of time to be added. Kalabar giving up a throw over on the far side. They're trying to protect this one goal advantage that they have. They're three minutes, four minutes away from the Flow Super, Super Cup semi-final. Clarendon College just four minutes away from giving themselves an opportunity to get back into the game. All the Calabar players are back behind the ball. Now they stream forward. It's three against three. Ball given away here. Clarendon College come back with another attacking move. Throw. Lamar Walker. With the throw to Niku Daly. Daly turns skillfully. Getting away in the area, Niku Daly. Free kick one here by Clarendon College. Daly brought down. And there's a Calabar player down injured over on the far side. Nick Hugh Daly is kicked over there by Giovanni Thomas from Calabar. It's the Mira Adams. From Calabar, down injured. So Clarendon College with a free kick. Actually, it's Colin Anderson, the man who got a double for Calabar, just looking over to his teammates as he's taken away. Is Calabar about to create one of the big upsets? of a schoolboy football 2017. The free kick will be taken by Demario Phillips. There can't be too much time left in this game. The referee, I'm sure, will be adding a few more minutes for that stoppage. Where the all the Clarendon College players are back in the in the in the 18 yard area except the goalie. All the Calabar players are back in the 18 yard area except for Colin Anderson who is off injured. The free kick comes across. The goalkeeper holds onto the ball a second time of asking. And the four minutes are just about up. But because Colin Anderson was down injured, the referee will add back the time it took him to get up and off the field. Long kick downfield. The referee looking at his watch. Clarendon College. Minutes, maybe seconds away from being dumped from the Flow Super Cup and they're out. Calabar High School has pulled off one of the, the big upsets of the season. Clarendon College is beaten in the Flow Super Cup. The first time of asking, one or two of the players have fallen to their knees. 
They're inconsolable. The coach, Bijan Thomas, just going onto the field and giving the players a hug while those in black and green celebrate. Look at that reaction. Those were the ones who were expected to leave here tonight as winners. But Kalabar, they have plotted and have executed the downfall of the mighty Clarendon College, led, of course, by that man, the technical director, Lenworth Hyde. What a shocking result here in Montego Bay. Clarendon College beaten in the Flow Super Cup. How does that sound? 4-3, you're seeing correctly on the screen. Clarendon College, six days on the road, a mixed road trip for them. The Ben Francis Cup champions, three days ago, beaten Flow Super Cup. First rounders, three days later. Okay, we'll have the highlights here of the second half. This is Clarendon College. Nikhil Daly getting away in the box. And that's an early opportunity for Clarendon College. And it was so long ago it was raining. But this, they made no mistake. Daly again, shutting Clarendon College in front. With that goal in the, from inside the 18-yard area, or with the outside of his right foot. Bam! In the back of the net. And the starman for Clarendon College. Giving the Ben Francis Cup champions a lead and he kisses the corner flag. There are one or two long range efforts from the Clark, from the Calabar captain, Hakeem McCourt. And that time, Colin Anderson. Look at this peach of a pass. Wonderfully done. And Roshane Williams profiting on the edge of the area to the right. Looked across. He spotted Colin Anderson. Anderson planted his left foot. Bam with the right. Two, two at that time. Calabar celebrating. But after that, Calabar hit them quickly and decisively again. Here it is. Ferguson coming from behind the defense. Slotting home to make it 3-2. At this stage of the game, the upset was on the cards. And with Ferguson celebrating, Calabar leading 3-2. They hit them again and hit them very, 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 very quickly. This is it. 4-2. And that was pretty much game over. The second goal of the evening for Colin Anderson. But Clarendon College would throw themselves a lifeline from this move. Wonderful turn here. Well, not this one. That was heading towards the goal. And Captain Hakeem McCoy kept it out. But this is the move that brought Clarendon College back into the game. Onto the field as a substitute. And kicking powerfully into the back of the net was Antonio Reed. And that was the last scoring of the game. Clarendon College beaten by three goals, by four goals to three. So the Calabar players celebrating. And we're getting ready for the other game as we look at the statistics. Now at halftime, it was 1-1. Look how many goals were scored in the second half. All of five. Clarendon College still dominated possession. They dominated in terms of shot on target. They dominated shots off target. But Calabar dominated fouls. One yellow card that went to Clarendon College's Tajay Brown. And the statistics she tells a story. Excellent covering from Angolo Conte. You're never exposed when you have Kante in the team. Conte. He's urged to shoot, he might just. Conte! Hi, I'm Angolo Conte. Download the Flow Sport app to watch Premier League football on Roche. On the Flow Sports app, you choose what you watch. Download now.